Hello, welcome to Tip Drops with Kalira. In today's live version, I would like to share some stretches for the hands, arms and shoulders. In honor of our Fanville Boost participants, hello, <laughs> we, we, today we had the final class of our Fanville Boost four week online class series. And in my enthusiasm, I keep forgetting to do or show the stretches that I like to do after working with Fanvilles. But these are also very good if you are working on working on a computer or on a phone, or if you just need a bit of a release for your arms, hands and shoulders. So feel free to join me. One thing I start with, which I always like, is to move first before I stretch. So it's it's a kind of warm up and range of motion opener at the same time. And to remember a couple of things to do, hello, hello, um, you can think of WWC, wiggle, wave, circle. This we can apply to our fingers. So you wiggle your fingers first, in whichever direction, then waving, so making, these are not full hand waves, but I'm waving the fingers separately. So I don't skip on these joints. If you have trouble isolating this wave to the fingers, you can try this one. I rub from the base of my index finger to the base of the thumb and beyond. You might have seen this in one of my hands and arms instructional videos. Then I go to the second, so I start right at the base. It's a bit of a stretch and strengthening at the same time and I continue as far as I can. Then the next finger, ring finger, stretch. So this I count as wave because you're making a wave motion with your fingers. Then you wiggle again and circle. This also I might have shown you in class. I do this also before Korean sword training because it helps not only the fingers and hands but the muscles across the lower arm. So I'm circling and circling back, circling and circling back. It's also good for coordination and if you dance with fan or any props, it'll refine your grip. It'll make you not grip as hard, but use fine motor skills. Hello? <laughs> and this is good for everything because our hands, we use them so much and it's good brain input as well. So we did wiggling, waving, all like this and circling. Then same thing for the wrist. Wiggling, I would mean shaking out the hands. It'll give you movement in the joints. I'm shaking to the sides. Hi Miko, welcome, welcome back. I'm flapping my hands and I'm shaking in whichever direction. Then waves, this will be lifting and dropping the wrist. And if you have trouble not moving the hands, you can hold your fingers or visually try to keep them in one spot and let your, or you can see the shoulders as one line. I keep the fingertips right at my collarbone and I lift and I drop the wrists above and below. And one of these might feel less comfortable than the other position. It's also good for poses, by the way, which means it's good for you to do. <laughs> that's what I wanted to say. So that's waving. And then you can wave the wrists and the fingers. And I'm calling this a stretch because you are extending. It's an active stretch, I would say, yes. Then circling. When you can go up and down with the wrist and side to side, this is maybe more tricky. Try to leave the elbows as they are, leave the fingers where they are and move, I'll try like this, move the wrists to the side instead. Also that I feel this all across the outside of my arm and a little across the inside. So, so it will, it'll help you activate and release any muscles that have not worked or it will balance out. <laughs> it's hard to talk and do this at the same. It will balance out what you have been doing. Now we circle. So I'm moving up, side, down, side, circling. If this is tricky, then it's a good drill to do. Good for hand coordination and you will see your hand movements in dance will become more smooth after practicing the wrists. And if you do any type of martial arts, it's very good to have clean hand-arm coordination for all your techniques, with weapons or not. Okay, now I'm trying a figure eight, a figure eight, up and down, up and down. Reverse, 
I have to really focus. So it's good for coordination as well as for mobility. Figure it down, figure it up. Shake it out. So we had wiggles, waves, circles, wiggles, waves with the wrist and circles. Now we'll do the same but with the whole arm. So we have the shoulders and the upper arms. With wiggle, I would mean shake out. I'm relaxing my fingers, shaking out the wrist, but also rotating the elbows and allowing my shoulder joint to rotate as well. So we shake out everything. With the arms up, with the arms in front, with the arms down, with the arms back. So if you need to activate this quickly, do these exercises. Then waves. If you're a belly dancer, classical snake arms are a very good exercise to move and coordinate all of your joints. But doing the reverse, the reverse, that's what for me releases my muscles. So if you're not used to it, try it. Only the knuckles, then the middle, then the fingers, but you straighten them, then the hand, you flatten out, then the most awkward one, but the most valuable one to reset and free up your joints, pressing with the palm down and rotating the elbow up. You will feel this here and here. Then from here, imagine this hand stays in place and you extend, it will push your shoulder up towards your ear from there to there. And then you can roll back out into a snake arm. If you do this a couple of times, your arm movements will get smoother. And for martial arts, you will have more speed because you're less tense. Other side the same. So it's a brain teaser and a good one for the body at the same time. Fingertips, only the fingertips. <laughs> See, my index finger didn't want to do it. Then the middle knuckles. Then the fingers are straight but down. And I try to keep this 90 degrees. Then I flatten out the hand, fingers flat, so the wrist is taking over. And you might feel this in different spots on the other arm. Now the tricky transition. My hand is parallel with the floor and my elbow rotates up. So from here, I come there. After this, my hand stays. I extend, which means my shoulder, I hope you can see it, will travel up. Then from there, I drop and roll out. So again, one, two, three. Practice this slowly. If this is challenging, this is something you can do separately without the wiggles and circles. And it's a very good exercise to get smooth arm movements with or without props. One, two, three, straight fingers, four, flat hand, five, elbow rotates up, rotates up, rotates up, shoulder, I try to keep it down for now, and then I press, my hand stays, and you can see my shoulder travels up a bit. From there, snake arm out. If you have it, you can practice from one side to the other, and even use it in dance. Okay, so that was waving. We had wiggling, waving, and circles. Circles you can do with the elbows, front and back, and with the arms extended, back and front. There are more things you can do <laughs> to relax and stretch your hands, arms and fingers. So we'll do a second part for this tip drop, and that's simply interlacing the fingers, pressing out, Oop, that was a little snap. But to challenge yourself, switch the fingers. So if you are used to always having one index finger on top, switch it and it will feel totally strange. And this is the one that I would recommend using to give yourself new input. So I'm extending my fingers out and you can now relax the back and the arms at the same time by pushing front. If you press up, you can lift and lower the shoulders. I'm doing the whole chain because it's all connected and switch those fingers. I, I also want to go to the more comfortable one. Yes, it works for snake arms as well as for the reverse. Thank you, Miko. And pressing down is slightly different also. So down, front, up. And then from there you move, you circle again. From the front you move and from down you move. 
Now this you might feel all over here. So the final one we do is a passive stretch and that is to relax everything that has worked now. And this is one of my favorites. I sometimes do this one separately. I support the arm. This was the one I want to relax. I support it with the other hand. I give myself a little massage wherever I felt tight. And then I move, use this arm to move the other one around. So I support the joint. And if I feel any tension in my rib cage or back, I can also rotate and move here. And if you want, wiggle those fingers or circle or wave on top. If you're short in time, you can do all of this at the same time. So I support my elbow joint with this arm. Optionally, I massage whatever felt tight. I move this arm so it can just rest on top. Different angles will give you different effects. So play with this. Use whichever angle is good for you. If you move it up more, you feel it here. Almost at my face, I have to bend my arm. If you move it over, you might feel it here or there. And you move your upper body. Again, you can wiggle, wave, or circle. Okay, and that's it for me for today. Thank you very much for being part of the tip drop uh, <laughs> gang. I am very thankful that I get to do these uh, little sessions with you. If you have any requests, let me know because I I love answering questions and I can use the tip drops to give you a little movement hints and motivation. If you were in the Fanville Boost series, I will be sending you the final video today. And if you are in my Facebook group, Kalida Online, I think most of you are, next Wednesday there's no online boost classes, we have a little break before we start with Bellywork Boost. I will have a free Facebook Live session at 12.30 CET Berlin time on Wednesday next week for everyone. We'll be doing ab exercises and a bit of belly work. So if you're into belly work or if you are curious about it or if you want to do some ab exercises, join me next Wednesday if you see this uh, live or during the weekend at 12.30. I will send a reminder also, but then already you have heard it. So I'll see you then. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.